Hey dog lovers, welcome back to my channel. If you struggle with a difficult or anxious dog during grooming sessions, you're in the right place today. In today's video, we're diving into the world of helping your furry friend not only accept dog grooming, but also remain calm and composed throughout the process. I am Amy Lee, Certified Professional Dog Groomer since 2003, and as an expert in dog grooming, I've encountered my fair share of challenging pups. Today I'm going to be sharing some of my tried and true methods that have helped countless dog owners just like you turn dog grooming time into a positive and enjoyable experience. In this video, you will learn handling techniques, safe restraining practices, and all the key factors a dog needs for you to have in place in order to trust you and the grooming process. So whether your dog gets nervous around clippers, wiggles away from baths, or simply dislikes being handled, stick around. By the end of this video, you'll be armed with all the secrets that you need to know that will make your next grooming session a greater success than the last one. The first thing that I must teach you will change everything when it comes to helping your difficult dog accept dog grooming and be calm during grooming. Do you know the impact that you have on your dog and his feelings about grooming, this is what you can do to change that for both you and your dog. I had the amazing opportunity to receive exclusive insight from a professional dog trainer who was also a leadership coach with humans specializing in emotional intelligence. This is Sean Kent Hayashi. She graciously joined me on a live call helping us understand some things about our emotional intelligence and how that may be affecting our grooming sessions with our dogs. And as we talked, I I realized the things she was pointing out are the things that are so overlooked in dog grooming, but not anymore. We are going to share it with you right now. This is the first step to gaining trust with your dog and building the confidence you need to groom them. So when the dog knows it's time to get on the grooming table, they're thinking, I'm going to struggle right here. I'm going to struggle. My pack leader's going to struggle. I don't know what my pack leader's thinking, but I can tell that my pack leader is struggling. I'm a dog and I can tell it. And that means that the dog is struggling too, if you're struggling. You are leading the whole scene. Everything you feel is going to be passed on to that dog. This could create what's known as a fear period. Dogs get through fear periods, but it could take a lot of training to pull them out of it. Sean, what are your feelings on fear periods in dogs? Keep us from failing our dogs. It is accurate that something can happen that triggers a dog and causes it to go into a fear-based place. Just like humans, love, joy, hope, envy, sadness, anger, and fear, you know, dogs have those vibrational states too. And if a dog gets chased with a vacuum cleaner or something else that triggers it into fear, you may have to really work on getting it unstuck from fear, just like you have to work on your yourself when that happens. So if you have a dog that's acting fearful, you'll want to create new thought patterns for that dog around the thing that's triggering the fear. For example, a hand sensitive dog. I don't know if you've ever experienced a dog that has hand sensitivity. I got a dog from another breeder who came to me being hand sensitive mm -hmm. and he would flinch when people tried to touch his face. I want to teach dogs to really like hands and hands interacting with them in that case. And so here's how I do that. I use food, feed the dog, hand feed the dog. And then I also use food to lure the dog into a position, let's say maybe into a sit. So we lure them into a sit and then we teach them, yes, sit. On the grooming table, we can also use that same awareness. If a dog is afraid of something, we can use food as a motivator. I would check with the owner of the dog if you you don't right. own the dog about what treats are appropriate. Like I have a dog who I can't feed chicken to. Yeah. So I never want her to have any chicken treats. Use treats that would be high value to the dog and lure the dog into the position that you want them in. So, you know, we show people how to teach their dogs in a very specific sequence. 
So we start with sit and then we do down. So we're luring into a sit, we're luring into a down, we're luring into a spin. We're teaching stay, then we're teaching stand. These are all things that you want on the grooming table. So if you're the one who's grooming your dog, train your dog in these things, teach them. This is so key because you can help a dog overcome its fears. You can help a dog learn to yeah. love learning. Now let's see if I can show someone how to get better behavior when trimming dog nails. So Grace is very fearful of her nails to be trimmed. Yes, Grace. Okay. Yes, Grace. Yes. Good girl. Good job. To my big girl, Grace. Notice the tension and fear with Grace. Yeah. She's really pulling back. She's very afraid. Yes, Grace. It's okay. Mm, Grace. Yes, Grace. Okay. Let's stand up. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, let's stand up. A Having bit. your dog stand can instantly boost their confidence a little bit. Ideally, you want your dog to be able to trust you for a nail trim. Work with them to the point where you don't need assistance. That's ideal because they have confidence and so do you. Yes, Grace. Good job, Grace. Now, Devin is definitely doing a fine job, but Sean is assisting and we ultimately want Grace and Devin to be able to do this without assistance and both be confident and calm. Now I want to see if possibly I can bring some different emotions and feelings to the grooming table for Grace. When you guys are working, Sean said, let's, let's have her stand up. That's a good idea. Okay. As much as possible. Because yeah. it builds her confidence. If, you know, she can stand proud, yeah. it, it, it's like a confidence boost. If she had a tail, you would tip the tail up. You know how that boosts her confidence, Sean? Yes, indeed. So, I mean, maybe, she does have a tail, so maybe for a second, you know. Yes, it's like people too when we stand up tall and yes. sit up with good posture we feel better and we're yes. able to think better yes and you feel more confident about what you what you're doing it's great that you guys are using the grimmer's helper stay tuned i'm going to show you more on safe restraints for your dog to help them feel more secure because it really helps her know that you want her to stay here and it also obviously limits her ability to dance around. The more a dog, like say a dog that's whining and wants out. Mom's outside, I wanna come out with you. <laughs> Mom's not letting the dog come out. Doesn't want the dog out, there's a reason why. So the dog's whining, whining. What happens when the dog whines? He whines more, he whines more and then he cries. Then he stands up and does this. So if we keep letting them elevate, then this system keeps them from elevating. Okay. It keeps them from fighting and twisting. And now she's not yeah. really that kind of dog. She's just saying I don't like it. But it does help so much in their psyche. This is already, you guys are set up for a win-win. Have a great stand. Boost That's your confidence nice. a little bit. Yes. Yes. The one thing that I noticed I would do differently with Grace that you did, I noticed you were trying to work with this out front. Okay. And there's a couple things. The well, first one is she's, she's really concerned about it. That pole is right there, which means the clippers are going to be right here. Yeah. And she doesn't like that. So maybe it'll work better. I usually run my hand down their, their, their little arm and mm -hmm. then I gently lift it out kind of to the side and straight. And then okay Grace. yes Grace. yes and i can't trim anything over here maybe if it's tipped back and it's also easier for you to see the nail okay in this direction yeah. i think just from my experience i think i, I can see it better if i'm tipping okay. it back kind of like i told you before we support yeah. that to keep to try to keep that straight so that she's not doing this okay or you can also just put put the hand in the armpit and still kind of support this and hold it back 
out away from her yeah it's kind of her little peripheral vision that helps a little bit other than that you know i think i think you're doing i didn't really have any other tips to give you on on the back feet you, you tip them up like this which was wonderful and obviously you always want to make sure your dog is standing if, if i had her leg hiked up like this too high yeah. she's gonna want to do this yeah. You know, and you know, you, you just tip it up and that's perfect. And then using your fingers to kind of manipulate each single digit that you're going to trim. So you are doing good. Now let me see if I have any success with Grace. Which one over here needs trimmed then? Which nail? Um, this is this one. Looks like I, I might should have use it. Yeah. See now how she's, she's pulling, she's pulling yeah. away. I'm going to bring her back. Yes. Yes. I call that resetting the dog, resetting their brain. Okay. And I'm going to do that again if she goes to do that. Yes. Huh? And reset again. Yes. We'll do this all day if we have to. We're helping the dog. Sometimes they say, you know, I got, I got more time than the dog. I'll outweigh this dog, you know, meaning we'll do this all day. Yeah. You know, I mean, the truth of the matter is we don't have all day. <laughs> we wish we could just sit here all day and say, oh, I can just keep bringing it back to find the stand. And then I'm yeah. saying, now we're talking. But if we have the time, that's always good training. Would you like me to hold her back here? No, it's ideal that Grace does it on her own if possible. I know that it makes her feel comforted when you're here. But at the same time, that also tells her maybe there's a reason she should be comforted. Ah, okay. She's a big So girl. I need to she stop do doing that. Maybe, yeah. maybe we can teach Grace to, to be more confident. That, that would be helpful because that'll change her mind. Sometimes just having your hand between their legs and working with that front paw reminds her when she goes to move that your arm's there and you want her to stay. Keep her standing better. Yeah. That's great. The truth of the matter is when we're working with a fearful dog or we have fear that we're bringing to the grooming table too, the truth is consistency and repetition. It won't happen the first session. Yes. that back a little bit. Yes, Grace. Yes, Grace. Good job. See, they can. Yeah. <laughs> they can't get themselves over the hurdle a little bit, but, but it helps. It yeah. helps to keep her still a little bit. See what I'm doing here? Is yeah. Kind of what a mother would do. Is that right, Sean? Yes. A mother would put pressure. Right in here. Just say, hey. And maybe that psychologically. Yes. And there again, we can take our time. We can make her make this take longer than it needs to. But that's what it's going to do. Yes, Grace. Yes, Grace. Yes, ah. Grace. Still now, this is where I would jump in and tell her no. Is that acceptable or not? Yeah, Grace, no. She knows that. Ah. Ah. Yes, Grace. Yes. That was a win, and she did it, so we're going to praise her. Stand up. Good. Ah. Ah. Good. Yes. Yes. Sometimes constantly touching them under the belly, reminding them that you want them to stand is what you have to do. I'm trying to get the right hold on it yeah. before I pull my hand over her and go for it. She's quick. She's actually not terrible. Ah, ah, yes. Guys, I've only trimmed a couple nails. Uh, most nail trims that I perform, I'd be done by now. We have to let this take the time it needs to take to get it done for Grace. So she knows she did it. Ah. Maybe I should let her get sick of fighting me for a minute. Just keep holding this one up. 
Take your time and just keep resetting them. Matt. Yes. One more, it's gonna be a win, okay? Yes. Yes! Grace, it's okay. Yes. Well done. Well done. Amy, we <laughs> find it's really actually a great way to train puppies. And we have puppies watch when the other dogs are being worked with or groomed. Yeah. And That's it's perfect. That is such a good point. You bring it up. I do the same thing with family dogs that come in, say maybe a a group of three dogs will come and be groomed and I always work with the, the most perfect dog first so the other two can watch and see this is how we do it you know and then I'll go for the the next one who's who's a little more better behaved than the other one they do learn they watch us like you you probably see them watching you when you're training with the other dog yeah. it's funny they learn so well that way. And of course, Grace is a therapy dog and she is very gentle and sweet. It's yes. just when she gets her nails done, she has, has a little she bit of a Has always, tough. always been like that for nails? As far as you can remember. Maybe the problem, Amy, is that I've always been like that. So I get anxious. Oh, you mean you, you were like, it's okay, Grace, it's okay. And so what I'm realizing is I may have been fostering some of the wrong thing i may have been Maybe. rewarding she's a very sensitive dog though i may have been rewarding the wrong thing by saying yes to her when she was misbehaving she on was the dancing. table and maybe yeah. I'm having an aha moment here about what i need to do better myself yeah. so thank you amy yes and grace so and grace, good. grace loves you she's yes so sweet she really is Okay, guys, now I think you're really starting to understand how we get better behavior from our dogs when we're working with them on the grooming table. Build their confidence by having them stand. This little Maltese, his name is Louie. I am having him stand. My hand is holding him up between his legs. I'll let him sit where he can. That's fine. But if I feel he's starting to worry and get concerned, I have him stand. Did you see how his head just went up? He's like, oh, yeah. I can do this. I'm a big boy. And it really helps their mindset, guys. It's all about the mindset. When dogs go into a fearful state, they really get themselves upset. And we want to keep that from happening. These are some items that are going to help you keep your dog from moving around on the table. Dancing around. Not very compliant. All these items can be picked up on Amazon. I'm going to link them. This particular item as a groomer's helper grooming loop i'm going to show you the exact way to utilize this properly on the grooming table to keep your dog safe and secure this is a nice little extension that i have found i'm going to show you how i use this with a grooming arm and the groomer's helper in combination to keep your dog safely secured on the grooming table so they don't dance around. And this is one I made from Paracord. You could make it from anything, but I'm gonna show you how I use all three of these. You can choose which one would work best for you. They are very, very helpful and very necessary, guys. So that's why I am so excited to share this with you today. The first thing I wanna show you is the Groomer's Helper Grooming Loop. This is very important because it has this hook on it. The hook is fastened so it will not move, but it will stay where we want it. It's adjustable to any dog, so it works like a collar. You have this clamp here that allows you to adjust too for the size of your dog's neck. You can shorten that up if you need to. So I'm going to put it on Gus and show you how to properly use the groomer's helper before I then show you how to use the groomer's helper in combination with something else to keep your dog close to the grooming arm and facing in the direction that you want them to be faced in. This clamp is adjustable. You know, you can lock it into place when it's where you need it to be. So I'm gonna open it up and we're going to put it around Gus and clamp it just like a collar. 
Now you want this resting in any grooming loop right here under their jaw, not here at their trachea. You want it under their jaw, if you can see this. Now how you get it to stay there is by adjusting your grooming arm once you've adjusted your grooming loop. Fit it like you would a collar. You wanna be able to nicely get two fingers in there and I'm going to lock it into place. So it is right under Gus's jaw, so it's not hurting him. It's going to guide him in the right way. Now, I know, big boy. I'm gonna hook it to my grooming arm. Now you can see there's a lot of play in this. That's what you don't want. If there's a lot of play, here Gus, come here. Your dog can put his head down. Meaning if I'm trimming something here, I don't want Gus's head near that. I want his head up here and away from my scissoring and clipping work. All grooming arms are adjustable. I'm going to adjust this so that, here Gus, can you put your head down? He can't, see that? Here Gus, touch mommy. He can't put his head down and he knows it. Good job. And that's okay, that's what you want. They're working here. So now I have this positioned correctly for Gus. However, Gus stand up, good. You can see he can still kind of move around on the table. We don't want that. Stand up Gus. I want Gus to be right in line with that grooming arm. I want him to stay close to the grooming arm. Right now he's got play. He could come back if he wanted to. He could step off that grooming table if he wanted to. So I'm gonna change that. This chain extension, these are nice. And I'm gonna hook that just to my grooming arm and I'm gonna find that little loop. I'm gonna fasten it to that. Now the cool thing about this is you can see there's room here. It's not pulling up on his trachea. Because I've attached it to here and you want this position down, you don't want this to be up here pulling your dog's neck up. You want it pulling down away from the trachea. That is the only area that Gus has to move himself on the grooming table, but that's okay, he's up here to work and he knows that. So we just wanna make sure he's safely secured on the table and because he's a big boy, he does pretty much take up the entire grooming table. I need to know that he's gonna stay where he needs to stay. And as you can see, he can't really, he can't back up. That, sorry, bud, this is as far as he can go. He could dance around and slip a leg off the table. He's not gonna like that, I guarantee you, and he'll wanna put himself back into place. So you want them in line with your grooming arm and close to the grooming arm. And this is one of the ways that you can keep them secured safely on the table and close to the grooming arm. Get one of these grooming arms to mount on your grooming table for your dog. If you don't have the grooming arm, you're not gonna have success. And your dog isn't as safe as they should be. That's one of the really, really important things that I wanna bring home here today to you guys is this really safely secures your dog on the table and it also allows you to be able to work with them much better. This is a game changer, guys. The game changer in grooming your dog successfully at home is a grooming arm, a grooming loop, specifically the groomer's helper that has this hook on it. A lot of the grooming loops that come with tables, portable tables, they have no adjustments to them. Your dog could actually slip out of them. Now here's one more option if your dog feels a little insecure on the grooming table because maybe they don't feel that they have good footing up there. They feel like they're slipping around. You can get a grooming mat that goes on your grooming table that's gonna give them just a little bit of extra grip, make them feel a little bit more secure. This one I'll link in the description of the video. You could use anything, guys. You could use a bath mat. You could use a towel. If it just gives them just a little bit more grip, sometimes it makes them feel more confident when they're on the grooming table. That's another thing. If your dog seems to be a little stressed when they're on the grooming table, try to secure their footing better by putting a mat or a towel or something underneath their feet so they feel like they're not going to slip and they feel very secure. So head on over to Go Groomer on YouTube and I will see you in the next video.